central to everything that we thought about was the fact that we wanted a hospital that was of international standards all the time. And you've heard from a patient who we didn't know was even going to contribute, but honestly, what a testimony. Um, and also to make sure that whilst we were doing that, we kept in mind the fact that the patients for us are central to everything that we do. So when you asked the question about palliative care, what we decided to do here was a complete one-stop shop. Because having practiced, coming from time to time, um, obviously I belong to uh, the family, the Lagoon Hospital family. My parents started Lagoon Hospital uh, about 40 years ago when I was just leaving medical school. So I've, I know quite a bit about the private sector in Nigeria, although I didn't really work with them. But you see the issues where patients access care, but it's so disjointed. You come and see a doctor somewhere, then they go and find a specialist somewhere else. You do your blood test somewhere, you do your scan somewhere else, and there's no cohesiveness. So that was the biggest thing for me, was to make sure that on this site, and you'll see it today, we have both the outpatient clinics, we've got seven of them, we do, we, you know, and we've designed the whole place in a way that feels like a home, that we think that promotes healing from the time people walk in through the door. Um, it doesn't feel like a hospital that smells of bleach. It's some, like somewhere that people will want to come back to time and time again. So we've got the medical side, the outpatient clinics, We've got a day unit where people come for transfusions, infusions, chemotherapy. For example, the patient I was seeing this morning who needs observation for a few hours can be observed in that setting and you'll see how nice it is. Um, and also in another building, we've got um, the theatres. So we've got two theatres. We've got all our imaging on this site apart from MRI. So we've got CT, we've got the uh, most uh, state-of-the-art mammogram uh, that's available which does better because patients can actually apply the pressure themselves and we get better images. We've got 64 slice CT scan and of course our baby, <laughs> as we call it, or the most important part of that we brought back was a linear accelerator machine, which is um, something that delivers radiotherapy to patients. Now, when you look at population statistics, we should have one of these patients per 100,000 of the population. And my maths isn't very good, otherwise I'd have done finance rather than medicine. Um, but if you say that we need at least a thousand of these machines in this country, currently we have five. Okay, it's a big issue. Um, and that's why we decided to actually go the extra mile and really invest in everything that we needed to make sure that any patient that comes here doesn't really have to go anywhere else. If they need a biopsy, we do it here. If they need chemotherapy, it's here. Surgery, it's here. Everything is done here. But it's also done because infrastructure is important. And Ms. W and I have talked about that. And how difficult it is for a doctor who wants to come back to be able to find the finance to do that. And that's a different uh, discussion altogether. There's a lot that the banks can do, that the government can do to really help make sure that people can access financing uh, and, and make this possible. But infrastructure is important in medicine. But at the end of the day, even if we look pretty, and we were not doing the right thing. We were not actually providing the best care for the patients all throughout their journey. When patients come, they see the seen in clinic, the diagnosis is made. If they need treatment, they, we make a special appointment for them to come and be counseled. They'll see Mrs. Ogunyemi or one of the counseling team. We will sit down with them, talk them through what is expected, what they're gonna have. We have patient information leaflets. It took me two years to design them with groups of doctors who are in their field. So we have leaflets on prostate cancer, on lung cancer, on just what to expect when you come, what is chemotherapy, what is radiotherapy. So patients can take these things home and really understand what's going on. So we really thought very carefully about the standards of care. We also, once a week, we sit with um, the radiologist, histopathologist, together with like I said, colleagues of mine who are uh, abroad, who have been exceptionally um, generous with their time. None of them charge me a penny, but every Thursday evening from four o'clock, and this week we had seven new patients to discuss. 
we discuss all the care, how they presented, maybe all the imaging, and together as a team, exactly like it would be done if you were in the UK. In the UK, it's called the multidisciplinary team. In the US, it's called the tumor board. We call it tumor board here because it says what it means. And we sit down and we all discuss what should be offered to the patient. And then we sit down with the patient and their family and we deliver the care. And what you've just heard from a patient is that we deliver that here, care here in Victoria Island. So patients don't have to get on a plane. They don't have to take their family away. We already talked about the, the impact for the patient. You know, when you're told you have cancer, it's such a shock. So uh, just one thing to say, so apart from cancer care, we're not just a cancer hospital, we look after other specialist uh, um, 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 conditions, but we also run something concierge health, which is uh, like a wellness, annual wellness check, um, which has been very, very popular because with COVID, a lot of people haven't been able to have that check. So we're having patients coming in and this is just fact of the matter. In the last two weeks, we picked up patients who would have had a heart attack within about seven or 10 days because the CT is showing that they have plaques in the coronary arteries. We picked up a young man with kidney cancer. He was absolutely fit and well, just came to have a test with his wife. We picked up two young women, one with breast cancer, one with lung cancer. No problem, nothing, they just came to have an annual check. So, you know, we're, we're, we're delivering the care from screening to make sure we pick things up because if we screen, if we pick things up early, the chances of treating the patient with cure in mind is higher. You know, even that word cancer, it shouldn't, it's not, should no longer be something people are afraid of. Obviously, nobody's hoping to have it, but the point is, when we make a diagnosis early, we can intervene early, we can provide all the care and the treatment, and we can make sure that patients are cured uh, and they survive. And we do that for other chronic conditions too. We have Dr. Femi Adenuka, who is a, a family physician who again came back from the US. We have, as she said, a doctor who specializes in palliative care. And we have other doctors, as I was saying, who are currently in the diaspora, but are coming surgeons, you know, nephrologists, cardiologists, they're all coming here to practice. So, you know, that's what we hoped to achieve, to be honest. Um, when we planned all this, um, because of the capital outlay, we had thought for the first six months we'll just do outpatient care, we won't admit any patients. We started admitting patients from day three, and the hospital is full today. Okay, so and we have patients who are now returning. This week we had patients who came back from Singapore, patients who came back from India, straight here to continue their care. So, um, yeah. That's what I want to say. Thank you so very much for coming to visit. Um, and yes, and as Mrs. Ogunyami said, um, you know, the infrastructure is one thing, the skill set is another, and we spent a lot of time. I mean, the nurses we have here, the radiographers, everybody, the pharmacists, the whole team, we're doing a lot of training to make sure that we're all functioning at the top level that people would expect if they left the country because that is what Nigerians deserve. Mm -hmm. But we also deserve to have it delivered here at home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.